Hey folks, uh, welcome back to another episode of how to build a compiler with LLVM and MLIR. Uh, Happy New Year and I hope you had a, a joyful holiday, you enjoyed your holidays. Um, today's episode is all about ORC, the LLVM JIT API and quick updates. Um, during the holiday season, I was working on JIT like always. <laughs> For past three four months, I, I I tried to make a bare minimum JIT engine using different approaches as I mentioned in previous episodes, but finally I managed to get a like a finish a like a really a small minimal and bare bone uh, JIT engine. What it does is when it, like it can compile namespaces, so whenever I add a namespace to it, it compiles it eagerly at the time of insertion. Which is not great, but for now it's fine. I'm going to uh, make some changes in the future, but you know, bare, bare minimum. And we want to finish up our uh, wiring. Also, I created uh, a functionality to reload namespaces. So when I add a namespace, it compiles it uh, and make it available. And then I might need to reload the namespace. For example, in a REPL environment, I, I want to re-import the namespace and user might say okay i want you to reload this namespace so it can manage that it compiles it make it available uh, and man it can manage like different copies of a namespace because we might have some code reference uh, referencing to the old version when i was working on that uh, like i I had to think about like different specifications of Serene all the time. Uh, what if user does this? What if user does that and stuff like that, right? So I was like, hmm, it might be the time to actually start writing the Serene specification to lay down the uh, groundwork to uh, make some solid foundation to make decisions in the future. So um, I'm going to do that as I'm going to start doing that so if you don't know about scheme a scheme is a lisp like a really famous lisp it's a specification is quite small and it's a nice language it's, it's it's a nice language i'm going to pick up the uh, schemes spec uh, keep what i like and add the stuff that is missing and remove the things that i don't like and that would be like the specification for serene I'm going to put it in the repo. You can, if you like, of course, like as soon as I started, I'm going to have some uh, sections. Uh, I'm going to talk about it in some sections of uh, future episodes, but it would be nice uh, for others to review it and give me feedback as well. So talking about the uh, Serene JIT engine, before we can actually jump to the, implementation and what I did we need to have a better understanding of org v2 um, so what is org v2 org v2 is uh, org engine the JIT engine is on request compiler or compilation I'm not sure the name is really funny uh, when they uh, there's a talk I put the link to it in the uh, description and in the resources section um, when the author actually uh, explains why they chose the acronym ORC. Uh, I found it really funny because we have like ELF format, right? right? Like ELF format for binaries and Dwarf standard for debugging. Uh, so they were like, okay, we have ELFs. We have uh, Dwarf. What's missing? ORCs. So that's uh, how they came up with the name ORC, which is really funny. It replaces the old MCG. You might come across the MCG name quite a lot in the LLVM source code. Um, don't bother with it. It's the old deprecated uh, JIT API in LLVM. Nobody, in my understanding, nobody use it. They don't want to use it. Uh, and ORC is far superior and better. So to, to learn more about ORC, now, there's some docs that I uh, put the link to them in the resources and some examples. Um, in today's episode, we're going to go through some of the examples uh, to learn how, how it works. And then there's an entire chapter and sorry, entire section on 
how to be legit in the kaleidoscope tutorial which is like the official tutorial of llvm but i highly recommend to look at the org docs and examples first because uh kaleidoscope uses a different approach that we're going to cover obviously but um it's like you need a better understanding of JIT to understand of org to understand the kaleidoscope uh, tutorial so i highly recommend to start with org docs um so when i was going through the documentation the examples and everything some of the stuff were really confusing to me because i didn't know about some of the terms and terminology in the context of that document so i thought yeah okay it might be a good uh, it might be a good uh thing to start with a description of some of the popular terms that you might come across in the documents or uh, examples it's okay if you don't understand them yet they're fairly straightforward but it's okay to not understand them just yet but it's it's good to have them like somewhere in your mind okay i heard that name before i don't know i know some stuff about it and little by little they're going to make sense to you as we go uh like we go on our journey in the source code the first concept is the execution engine execution session and actually i should have included the execution engine as well which is like the name is kind of self really obvious right um but execution session is a session that describes a running jit program right it contains everything from jit dialibs uh, error reporting uh, and like basically the how the materialization work and everything in that area so uh, like an execution session is just a running jit engine when you run your jit you have an execution session then we have JIT addresses that are just simple. Uh, it's just a wrapper around the, like a address type, you know, it's the pointer type, right? It refers to an address in the JIT code. So when you compile some code, put it in memory, a JIT address points to any code that you already compiled. We have JIT dialibs, which is a class, it represents a jitted code like a dynamic library that we store our jitted code in it each jit dialib like in our case kind of map to a namespace so a namespace compiles into it when you compile a namespace it's going to end up in a uh, jit dialib in current implementation we might have multiple uh, jit dialibs for one namespace why we'll see in the future basically you can think of it as a, a symbol table when we compile some code we have some symbols that refers to some chunks of code right some ch chunks of compiled code in memory the jit dialib contains the table of those symbols for like if we take c or c plus plus as an example it each uh, JIT dialib can be like a shared library, right? Or a static library or whatever. An entity that has some symbols that we want to link with other stuff. Uh, by the way, no, no, it's too soon to talk about that. We have uh, materi materialization units that, so when we compile some code and we put it in a JIT dialibs, as I mentioned, like we have some symbols. For example, in in our current uh, situation that we eagerly compile namespaces, as soon as I put something in the JIT engine, it compiles it, put it in memory, and make it available. By make it available, I mean you can look up symbols in that uh, compiled code, right? But that might not be something that we want like eagerly compiling everything at the insertion time might be good when we want to have our jit running on compilation time but on runtime it's going to have like some performance issues and user will notice some latencies depends on the how big the 
how big the code is but um in order to address that or came up with the with some ideas that let us actually lazily um resolve symbols so a materiali mater oh it's really hard for me to pronounce this one material materialization unit <laughs> is um like is the solution for org to provide a kind of a way to say to tell the uh, daily that okay here's the symbol and i hold the definition whenever you need the symbol just let me know i'm going to material materialize it for you oh boy it's really hard um so that's how like that's the purpose basically behind them and that way whenever we add some name a space or a LLVM module or whatever into our jet engine then we create the symbol table but we don't provide the definitions of those symbols so jet uh, knows what symbols like to contain basically but it doesn't exactly know where the definition is whenever we look up a symbol then we can use the mater materialization unit to actually re compile the symbol at request and put it on memory, you know? So uh, it makes the, uh, makes the G2 run faster and just compile whenever we need something. But in order to track those, we need another uh, entity called materialization responsibility that tracks the materialization units, right? Oh boy. It's, it's really hard to pronounce it and it keep, keeps popping up. <laughs> so anyway, um, basically uh, they work as a bridge between uh, JIT dilibs and mater materialization units. Uh, they pr provide a way for the JIT dilibs to know whether uh, the materialization failed or uh, succeeded for some symbols and vice versa. So this is actually like these, uh, the combination of these three uh, concepts are really strong, right? Like really good and we can do a lot of stuff with them. Um, by default, if we use them, we get compilation on request uh, on symbol lookup time. Like whenever we add the code and we look up a symbol, it like the JIT go our engine goes and compiles the like look up the material uh, materialization unit for uh, that symbol, compiles the code, put it in memory, and return a reference a pointer to it. Right, but we can do it even lazier than that, as we uh, as we're going to see in the future um org provides a way to actually just compile whatever we need when we call it even lookup time we just get uh, when we look up a symbol we don't compile it but when we want to use that symbol and like if it's a function call it then it goes and compile find the materialization unit compiles it put it in memory and basically call uh, call that symbol it's pretty nice, uh, and the API is uh, really simple to understand. Probably we're going to take a look at it in the next episode. Uh, memory managers. Um, we might not uh, come across this one just yet, but to put it simply, it's just a class that takes care of uh, your memory management, the JIT engine's memory management. Like memory allocation, the allocations, and stuff like that. LLVM by default have... Look, Sorry, I guess two memory management managers. I might be wrong, but there's one that is quite simple and covers most of the use cases called sorry section memory manager. Um, we're going to use it in the future, but yeah, just to know what what it does. Finally, we uh, we're going to talk about layers quite a lot. The design like or uh design and api is around layers so whenever we create a jet engine our engine is uh, like a container for several layers that link to each other um, i should avoid the uh, term link here because it might make confusion 
they connected to each other in certain way and um, create they create a kind of a, like a data pipeline. We put something uh, in it, it processes it, compiles it, links it, and does some other stuff based on the layer configuration that you have. Like what layers do you have in your pipeline and spit out some result or make something happen for us. Uh, layer is just a concept like an abstraction uh, thing in Orc. Quite nice. I'm really impressed with the design of Orc. To be honest, I actually mentioned this in the um, in the Discord channel of the JIT uh, Orc and JIT in LLVM Discord. Super impressed with the design. It's so flexible, so easy to understand. It might at first it might you need to get your head around it a little bit because other than uh, JIT related stuff there's other things you need to know and that was my case like I needed I need to understand some of the things that kind of were outside of the JIT context to understand the whole thing but when I studied them like the design is really impressive I'm really uh, impressed by the design and two more uh, concepts and terms to talk about. One is resource tracker. That is the answer, uh, the works answer to kind of res uh, obviously resource tracking. It tracks the compiled code. Like whenever you add a module to your JIT, you can, uh, not you can, you'll track it with the uh, resource tracker. Uh, it happens automatically if you use any uh, high-level API of work, but if you want to create your uh, JIT engine um, kind of from scratch, it's not from scratch, but don't use any high-level API that we're going to have a look at in the future episodes as well. You need to uh, utilize the, the resource tracker. You can remove the compiled code using resource trackers and stuff like that. And there's a thread safe uh, module, which is the same as LLVM module. It's just a wrapper around it. It's a container that make it thread safe. That's it. Uh, quite simple. So just because of this thread safe modules, I had to module. I had to make some changes to certain code to actually use thread safe modules instead of normal modules, which makes sense. Uh, the JIT will be our uh, one of the biggest components that we have. We have to play nicely with it. Uh, with the terminology out of the way, uh, let's see some of the high-level API of Orc. So as I mentioned, it, um, Orc provides a layer-based design that let us create our own JIT. Um, but it provides two already built uh, JIT engines that we can use. And we're going to look at the implementation later. We might scrap the surface today, but uh, in later times, we're going to uh, jump deeper. One is uh, LLJIT, and the other one is LLLazyJIT. LLJIT, it's just uh, already made and ready to use JIT engine. It uses Orc API. Uh, you can customize it to a certain uh, to a certain degree. Uh, we'll see it in action. Um, it's it's not lazy. So whenever we add some LLVM module to it. And when we look up a symbol, it's going to compile the code for that uh, symbol in lookup time. But uh, LLLazyJIT, which kind of inherits from LLJIT, is the same, but just lazier. Whenever we want to use a symbol, like call a symbol, it's actually going to uh, compile it. We have to measure a solution to uh, create the JIT. Like there's actually, three solutions which the third one is a subset of another one we can't really call it three but anyway um one is to actually wrap uh, llg or uh, oh i made a mistake here uh, llg or llazy jit so many else um that's the first approach that actually the current implementation of things uh jet engine is based on this one and the second approach that we can take is to write our own uh jet engine using the org api like instead of using llg or llazy jet we can create a new one that 
works just like them but with different layers or different setup whatever right i did that one as well it's in the uh, repository um not complete yet but just a hunch in my head in the future we're going to have a combination of these two together so we're going to have our jet engine and a wrapper on that jet engine but depends on how things are gonna go we're going to have a look at the source code right now but really quick some uh, resources uh, i'm going to put the link to them you can uh, actually use the slide that i put the link in the description or uh, um, anyway i'm going to add the links to the description as well there's three talks by lang hames he's really amazing i i'm not sure but i guess he's the uh, main author of orc i might be wrong don't take my word for it but no matter what he's really good he's amazing really helpful person he helped me a lot as well and these three videos are amazing i highly recommend you to watch all three kudos to him uh just a thank you um so, such a helpful guy so let's have a look at what we have like some code actually if we jump to the llvm project on llvm and examples uh there's a orc v2 example right there's a bunch of stuff in here, but there was another thing here I missed. Oh yeah, how to use not how how to use JIT actually is based on uh, MCJIT, which we don't want. Oh yeah, how to use uh, LLJIT, like the simplest possible <coughs> example. So as you can see, there's some documentation here. Uh, we have some function. We're going to like we have some function like add one in like c plus plus function right c or c plus plus function that we want to add to our jit and then call that function with number 42 so just a help uh, like a helper function to create a dummy a demo module for uh for example it just creates a function called add one and like adds the entry block in the entry block it kind of uh, cre create the llvm ir uh, for the function that we saw but on the main function as you can see it's like quite short it orc is like really amazing that's what i said about uh, the design and how impressed i am um we set up the llvm first set up the native target uh, uh, assembly printer and stuff like that uh, set up the kind of a cli arguments like the cl package um i don't know whether i talked about it or already or not but it's a utility library in llvm that helps you to kind of create nice cli tools um just defines the parameters that your program can accept and stuff like that here's the real magic it creates uh, we use something called llgit builder and the function on like, on that object called create to create the actual llgit we're going to look at it uh in a bit but what it does it's kind of a llgit builder we can set it, uh, set up different aspect of LLG uh, via the LLG builder, like add custom compiler uh, layer or things like that. You know, we're going to have a look at it. So after this, like it's going to be like if there's an any error, just exit, like a spit out the error and exit. Um, we're going to end up with a unique pointer to LLG, as you can see on the top. Uh, right and we created like a demo llvm ir module for the add function and finally we add that module to our jit engine as you can see there's a function called add ir module i'm going to show you show you the implementation real quick but that's how we add llvm modules to our um, jit engine and if you notice the create demo uh, demo module returns a thread safe module that's how 
like that's the module that uh, or always uh, kind of work with not the uh, regular llvm modules and the thread safe modules are as i mentioned just the wrapper so uh, it it provides some functions that take a lambda as the input that let you actually work with the uh, wrapped llvm module anyway when we add the module to our uh, engine it's ready to use we can look up the symbol that we have so we the lookup member function we can look up any symbol when we look it up uh it's going to compile the llvm module into target code and make it available to us so if anything happens we're going to exit an error otherwise we're going to have a have something in like as you can see on the top right the type of add one sim is JIT evaluated symbol. Evaluated symbol means this thing is already compiled, right? So we get some, let's say, reference to the compiled code. Uh, and then we can use get address of that evaluated um, symbol to, as you can see on the top right again, to get the JIT target address. It's just a JIT address, right? it points to somewhere in the compiled code in memory and then since we know it's a function that takes just one integer we cast it to a function pointer a function pointer that returns an integer and takes just one integer this this is due to the fact that we know the signature of add one if we have like a Sorry, if we want to gener uh, create a generic JIT engine, there's no way that we know uh, for sure that each, what's the signature for each function. That's why we have to do some other stuff to figure out, okay, what is this function that I'm going to call? Uh, what's the return type? How many parameters does it take? What, what are the types of the parameters and stuff like that? But for now, since we know the signature of add one, that's why we cast it to a function pointer. And then we call the function pointer that we created here. Uh, and we call it with number 42, take the result and just print the result. Pretty simple, easy to understand. And that's how fantastic work is. Super easy, super simple. Um, let's have a look at the JIT builder. So it's, it's just a class with a bunch of uh, functions in it, right? And do, do, do. where is it? Hang on. Oh, there's it. It should be around here. No, 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 no. Which one are we? Okay. So, um, oh, yeah. okay so this is actually like it has a mechanism that provides some uh, member functions for us to um, make changes to the JIT engine that we like LL JIT engine that we want to create for example we, we can set the executor process control we're going to look at look at what it is in the future or we can set the execution session set the target machine builder like if we want to a JIT for another target machine uh, than, uh, rather than the default or we can set the data layout object layer uh, linking layer what is object la uh, linking layer we're going to see in the future basically it, it, it's responsible for linking the JIT dilibs that we have in the uh, in our JIT engine um, we can create a function uh, actually uh, we can kind of uh, customize the compilation layer, add a, like a different compilation layer that works to our need. For example, instead of compiling um, LLVM modules, we can compile, I don't know, some other thing like ASTs or stuff like that. If we provide uh, a custom compilation uh, layer and set the platform setup, what is platform we're going to see if we use a concurrent compiler, which of course is going to be another um, 
like a replacement for a normal compiler layer nah. so we can use different compiler uh, layers right if we use a concurrent compiler layer then we can set up the number of th threads here and uh, you got the idea right so we have uh, finally the create uh, function that actually creates the llg based on the co uh, configuration that we asked for um the same uh, the same builder class exists for the ll lazy jit as well so as you I, as you saw we can customize it to some degree which is nice but if we need anything more than this we have to create our own jit engine let's have a look at uh, another example there we are okay examples yeah this one might be nice oh i had it open up so this one is another example that dumps the compiled object into like com compiled code into an object file again uh some cli parameters and um, that's it like where to uh store the dump and stuff like that not important set up the llvm uh set up the cli interface create the jit engine ju this time uh we don't do like like previous time we, we we're not doing any uh, customization to our JIT engine and exit on an error. So J here would be our JIT engine. Then we look into like, obviously if a uh, user provided the input that we want, if the dump JIT object is true, then we get the transform layer, object transform layer. It's one of the default uh, layers in LLJIT, right? and then we add the transform function which is like okay um basically what it does is whenever jit compiles anything and pass it to the to the object uh, linking layer then it does its magic and after that it calls our callback uh to let us know that okay i compiled the thing here's what you need right so um if you look at oh it's actually a already built function in a already built class in llvm right it's just a helper fun, a helper class that dumps the input dumps the compiled code into an object file right and when we do that then like like before we can add the module create a module parse it to uh, this add one example if we have a look at it it's just like a uh, llvm module in textual format so we can add that module parse it and add it to our engine like this we move the thread safe module m to our jit engine using add ir module and then exactly like before we look it up we get the address for the looked up uh symbol cast it to a function because we know the exact signature we cast it to a function pointer and we call it when we call this thing actually on time in time of uh, lookup since it's llg it's going to compile the code uh, the compiler layer is going to compile it pass it to the link layer it does the linking that is necessary and finally it's going to call our callback in the object transform layer uh, that is going to actually dump the object into an object file um here yeah so if like if you look at the implementation of that dump object file as you can see the callback that we have gets just an a unique pointer to a memory buffer it has to return a unique pointer to a memory buffer as well it's like um the transform the linking object linking transform layer passes the unique pointer to us do your business and give it back to me right that's what happens here i'm not going to go into details but what what happens is it's going to get the identifier of the memory buffer uh, create an object file from it and uh, dump it on disk 
that's it and return the uh, move back the memory buffer you can actually create your callback do whatever you want in this and that's the beauty of the orc basically uh highly cu customizable you can do anything with it the layer uh, implementation is pretty nice pretty unique um let me see if we can have a look at another example oh yeah this one is nice too so um same example but this time we want to add initializers and deinitializers uh, for our uh, module for uh, sorry jit dilib again some uh, lvm ir module but we have initializer and uh, deinitializers in this module same setup create the jit parse the like come up with some llvm module uh thread safe module and add it to the jit engine like we see that pattern all the time um yeah it's great like we have two flags for in initializer flag and the initializer oh this part is kind of important so as i mentioned we we might have one or more uh jit dilibs in our jit engine depends on the implementation that we want depends on our needs we have to we come up with some mapping between uh jit dilibs and our unit of compilation which is which in serine it's just a name space so right now just as a like a assumption which is kind of false but it's okay for now let's say each name space maps to one jit dilib right so by doing this we're going to get the main jit dilib what's the main jit dilib depends on the implementation for me the name space that i'm in it is the main one at the moment right it returns the uh, um, jit that we have and then we use define member function to define a symbol that's how you define a symbol uh, in your jit dilib actually you don't need to do this when you add this stuff it's already uh, like your jit dilib knows how to look up a stuff in your uh, in your um, compiled code but for example in this scenario we we're going to have a add an absolute symbol what's an absolute symbol we'll see in the future but for example you're going to say yeah when you want to use some uh, external functions and stuff like that you can use absolute symbol a symbol that the address doesn't change if i'm not mistaken um then we, we're going to mangle the name like what mangler does is just to change the name based on the platform or your own rules by default um on linux it doesn't make the uh, name any like it doesn't make any change to the name but on mac 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 os probably it creates either like an underline or anything or something like that to the name i'm not sure but basically it makes sure that your name is kind of uh, like in mangles the name based on your rules uh and put it in uh, sorry and look it up in the memory um ooh, doesn't look it up in the memory we use the, we use the mangler to kind of change the name and then interact with the memory just because we don't want any name um, collision or stuff like that but for us it's less issues since we have namespaces and finally here we're saying that okay we i'm going to define an absolute symbol called uh, initializer run flag and the address of it would be a jit address from pointer pointer to the flag that we defined here so we kind of i i have to avoid using the term link here but we we're kind of connecting the definition of symbol initializers run flag to the one that we have defined in our own code so we compile some code from llvm ir and put it in memory and we have some code that we have relies on our c++ code in memory as well this way we can kind of connect them together we define a symbol with the address that points to an address in our own um, 
memory section um memory segment sorry yeah we do the same with the initializer run flag as well we, again we use a pointer to an object that we have in our c++ code um not llvm module itself like this is a nice way for example for example a use case of this would be whenever for serene whenever we create uh, the standard library some of the functionality might need to be implemented using c plus plus we can just use regular c plus uh, plus and compile uh, compile it uh, use this approach to kind of connect the symbol to its definition that we uh, have in C++ rather than compiling it to LLVM IR and then to the target code just or like to use the print function or whatever right and then since uh, we just use the initialize and deinitialize uh, function on the jitdilib that we have on the main jitdilib um, we're going to see a pattern like this quite a lot right now we used it for absolute symbols but if uh, for ll lazy jit which we're going to have a look probably in the next episode this one is uh quite long on its own um we can define lazy symbols or re-export symbols or, or some other types we'll see in the next episode hopefully um i guess that's it for uh, today folks I'm going to put all the links in the description. Um, I hope it was useful to you. The Jitter stuff is a little bit uh, confusing. At least it was for me uh, to begin with. I'm getting used to it uh, more and more, um, but it's really amazing. It's going to be a major part in our compiler. So we're going to spend more time on it. Um, hopefully uh, we're going to get to see the certain code uh, soon um if you have any feedback for me please share uh, and if you like my work please subscribe to the channel and uh, consider supporting the project as well i hope you have a great time and see you on the next episode